Hi everyone, this is Jo. Now I want to do two videos. This is video one about the heart and then the next video I want to link to the brain. Now I want to talk about worry, stress and depression and also panic. So all these things are going to link in. But the first thing I want to talk about in this video is this idea of coherence, heart-brain coherence. So this video, we're going to focus on the heart. Now I want to tell you some amazing things about the heart and why the heart is involved in anxiety and worry and depression. Now, when we feel grief and loss and we think of that kind of depressed feeling, where do we feel it? We don't feel it in our brain, do we? That's the worry part. We worry about things and that's very cognitive. We, we ruminate, we go over things in our head, but the, the grief, the loss, the depression, that stuff we feel either in our heart or in our gut. We feel it in the core of our bodies. Now there's a reason for that. The heart has a very integral role in all of this. Now for the longest time, the medical profession has really thought of the heart as just a pump. This biological mechanism to pump blood through our body and, and keep us oxygenated and alive. We've never really thought of the heart as something that feels, something that thinks, something that experiences and remembers. That's always been in the domain of the brain. Now, I guess in literature, in, in creative works of writing and poetry, we have seen the heart fulfill this role. We hear about the heart longing, the heart breaking, the heart yearning, the heart feeling, but it's always been uh, constricted to the domain of literature and poetry. But I think they were onto something because indeed the heart does serve these functions. And we're now starting to learn about this more through fields of science, spect analysis, um, energy meridians. So there's been a, a bit of a amalgamation of very ancient beliefs and traditions through literature and the arts now sort of colliding with the science and technology and we are finding some incredible things. Have you ever heard of heart donors where the, the donor heart has gone into the recipient and then where there's some documentaries about this on YouTube and you should look them up, they're pretty phenomenal. And then the recipient starts to remember things, memories that were not really their own. They start to have preferences, maybe it's you know, they like spicy food when they've never liked spicy food before. They start to have these strange kind of phenomena that later are traced back to belonging to the donor. So the heart uh, transplant has also brought a sense of new memory, of new preferences, things that seemed to be unfamiliar to the recipient. Now, where has this come from? Sometimes we consider this just coincidental or inexplicable, but with some of this emerging science around the heart, we are finding some fascinating facts that might explain this. So I want to talk to you about that now. Did you know that research now explains how the physical and energetic heart plays an extraordinary role in our lives? Our heart rhythms affect the brain's ability to process information. The heart has 40,000 sensory neurons, 40,000. Now, we used to think when the heart is just a pump that it didn't have any of these sensory neurons. It was just a biological mechanism. It just, its sole purpose was to pump blood. Now the brain has billions of these sort of sensory neurons and the gut has about 400,000. But now we know the heart has about 40,000. Neurons involved in relaying are sending information to the brain. So this means that not only is the brain communicating to the heart, but the heart is also communicating to the brain. In fact, we now know there is more information going from the heart to the brain than the brain to the heart. Now, why is that? What purpose would there be in the heart sending this sort of sensory information to the brain? So the, the heart has some amazing functions, apart from the obvious ones about circulating blood and, and, and keeping us alive. It has some purpose involved with emotions, with depression, with stress, with anxiety, and these other functions that I'm going to talk to you about. But the heart also has a magnetic field. Now the magnetic field of the heart, we 
are learning is more powerful than the magnetic field of the brain and it can be measured several feet away from our body. The negative emotions that we feel can create nervous system chaos, but positive emotions do the opposite. So when we go into negative states like fear or anger or resentment or any of those things, we start to see a change in our nervous system and our heart and brain are responding to that in a very unusual and connected way. Positive emotions can increase the brain's ability to make good decisions and we know negative emotions can impact the brain's ability to make bad decisions. But where does the heart fit in this? In fetal development, the heart forms and starts beating even before the brain begins to develop. There is something else going on with the heart. Whilst positive emotions can create physiological benefits in the body, you can also see the negative emotions creating negative impacts, detrimental effects in the body. And we get things like cardiovascular disease now throughout the world emerging as the number one killer. Cardiovascular disease, yes, it's attributable to diet and all these other environmental cues, but could it also be attributable to the way we think, to the state and that pervasive and enduring impact of negative emotions? Maybe. A mother's brain waves can synchronize to her baby's heartbeats, even when they are a few feet apart. Now think about that, a mother's brain waves synchronizing to the heartbeats of her baby. What we also do in my clinic is we learn to synchronize our brain waves to our own heart waves. And this is called heart and math coherence or heart brain coherence. We will talk more about this in another video because when we can synchronize our heart waves and our brain waves, we can also override those autonomic nervous system functions that have that negative impact, that stress response, that panic response, that worry. We can actually intercept that within a few minutes. So yes, I can stop you having a panic attack within 60 seconds. Well, not me personally. I can give you the information and I can teach you how to do this. But when we synchronize our body and our heart and brain together, some amazing, powerful things are going to occur. So the heart is in a way a brain of its own. This heart-brain connection, uh, it, it's very powerful. And like the brain, um, there's an intricate network of neurons, neurotransmitters, proteins and support cells that are happening in the heart. And the heart can act independently of the cranial brain and it has extensive sensory capacities. So the heart is sending signals to the brain and when it's doing this, the heart is influencing both perception, how we see the world, emotional experience, how we feel the world, and these higher mental processes as well, how we, how we think about it. So let me tell you some things. Did you know that the heart has this system of neurons that have both short and long-term memory? And the signals they send to the brain can affect our emotional experiences. So there are memories that have been stored in the heart there are coherent heart rhythms that help the brain in creativity and innovative problem solving. So the brain is thinking, but the heart is thinking. The brain is feeling and the heart is feeling. And these two things, these two organs, these powerful electromagnetic organs that are producing, emitting and receiving energy, uh, when they're working in together, have this synergistic effect. There is things that can happen through this. Others can pick up the quality of your emotions through the electromagnetic energy that's radiating from your heart. So without speaking, without saying anything, just by measuring your electromagnetic field, we can, uh, we can determine what sort of emotional state you're in because your heart is emitting this energy. This is a force that can be measured and felt and perceived. This is something pretty powerful. 75% of adults are reporting that they experience moderate to high levels of stress at any given time. At any given time, 75%. So we have to work out how we can override this. How can we use our brain and our heart? And indeed there's a gut connection too, but I'm not gonna add that layer right now. But how can we add this? How can we use our brain and our heart to get control of stress? 
to perceive the world differently, to feel the world differently, to, to intercede with, intercept that worry and that panic response and lift our mood where we can. And when we learn these tools and these techniques, and there's technologies that we can also administer and apply this. And that's what my next video is going to be. I'm going to show you one of these technologies, which will measure things like heart rate variation and show you in real time how I can change my heart and brain activity and feel better and get a sense of control over those autonomic nervous system responses that create stress. So when we put people through these um, these processes and teach them how to do this, 83% feel almost instantly better. 69% said they feel that they have more health and vitality. And 33% will also report an immediate impact um, in sleep, so improved sleep. And these percentages that I'm quoting were run by the HeartMath Institute and are based on 5,000 assessments of individuals who use the HeartMath um, technologies and the M-Wave technologies, which I'm going to show you in, in my next video. So a lot of what I've spoken about today is from the HeartMath Institute, but it's also from a lot of research literature and scientific studies, which are showing now that this heart, um, our hearts are working in this strange fashion that are above and beyond what we thought that they were designed for. Now, when we talk about synchronicity and getting the heart and brain connection happening, imagine if we could do that in a community way, in a global way. What would happen if everyone's heart and brain started to synchronize? What powerful patterns would this have? Now that's another video that I'm going to do, but there is some information around that global coherence in the HeartMath Institute website. So go and head over there if, if you want to have a look at that. That's heartmath.org. Um, but as far as clinical psychology, panic, depression, anxiety, I want to use this amazing information and technology and show you in my next video how this works. So have a look for that. Uh, that will be uploaded next week. But start thinking about things differently. We are powerful organisms. We are not just a body. We are a soul that has a body. We have amazing power and potential and ability. We produce energy. Everything that is alive is producing and emitting and receiving energy. And it's a bit like a radio station. If you don't like the music that's on the channel, you need to change the frequency. You need to change the dial. So many of us are just stuck there in situations that we are unhappy with, that are causing us stress at a cardiovascular level, at a cellular level. Trauma is a type of anxiety. When we go through traumatic experiences, we are meant to heal from them. We are not meant to stay trapped there. Trauma is something that has happened in the past, but experienced in the present, like grief. What we need to do is leave that place. We can't anchor in the past. If we anchor there, we are going to stay unwell and the body will keep the score. The heart will keep the score. The muscles have memory. Our bodies start to feel the trauma and it will come out in physiological symptoms, autoimmune conditions, headaches, gastrointestinal problems, all sorts of conditions are being linked to trauma. And I will talk to you more about this in my next video. But for now, if you have gone through a traumatic situation and you can't get over it, then you need to unlock this power. I need to show you how you can get through that. You don't have to suffer forever because of something that has happened previously. And yes, I know people have gone through horrendous traumas. There's child abuse, sexual abuse, domestic violence. There's all sorts of trauma, much less natural disasters and things that are just products of, of mother nature. We've gone through terrible things, but we are resilient. We are meant to recover. And just like when a bushfire goes through and burns out the forest and causes massive devastation, the forest grows again. It regenerates, even from the most incredible, powerful fire fronts. We too are meant to regenerate. We are not meant to stay burned and damaged and broken. When you know how to untap and end get into the potential that this is this abundant energetic life force around us and within us and we can raise our frequencies and start to synchronize with the the healing energy of the earth 
of our brain, of our heart, of everything that is, then you can recover. You have this power. You don't need me. You don't need psychiatrists. You don't need medicines. You just need to know how to do it. So I'm going to do a series of videos around this. Um, this is just an introductory video, but it is made to tell you about the amazing power and potential of your heart and brain connection. So wherever you are, I wish you a happy, peaceful day. Look after yourselves and each other, and I'll be back with you part two of this series really soon. Take care for now. Bye-bye.